Mad Max is an open world action game set in a post-apocalyptic world with the Mad Max films as the backdrop. You play as Max and your story begins just after you're jumped, beaten and you've lost everything. Survival in this world centres around a few things, your vehicle and the petrol to keep it moving, water sources, your reputation and the combat capabilities both in your car and in hand to hand combat. Mad Max originally released back in September 2015 for PS4, Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So, five years later, is it worth playing if you missed this title? In this review I'm going to cover the feel of the game, the gameplay loop, the various activities the game has to offer, the combat and the progression you're able to make as you play through the story. I will avoid any story spoilers for those who don't want that part ruined for them. If you enjoyed the video or find it useful, please leave me a like or comment before you go, it really helps the channel out. So the original reviews for Mad Max back in 2015 gave the game mediocre scores. On Metacritic it averaged to about 69 out of 100 and personally I believe this is too low. The reality is that Metal Gear Solid 5 released on the same day as Mad Max and it was a much more anticipated title and scored an average of 93. Not to take anything away from Metal Gear Solid, but I feel that if two AAA games release on the same day, one is always going to make the other look worse. In this case, Metal Gear took the spotlight and Mad Max was left looking like the poor cousin. So how does the game hold up in 2020? Well, there are a lot of things to do, and once you've spent an hour or two on the main story, you have a lot of freedom for what you want to do next. If you're a story player only, then you can expect around 20 hours gameplay here. For completionists and car collectors, you can happily double that number. When you begin the game you've lost everything, but you meet a very unlikely companion who believes you're a saint, worships cars and pledges himself to you. He promises to help make you the best vehicle so that you can continue your quest as you were before you lost it all. The game is centred around collecting scrap to use for parts, looting bodies, scavenging yards, cars you've smashed to pieces. You need to make friends among the Baron's warlords too, helping them to build up their strength and make their strongholds self-sufficient, which will fuel your growth. But first, you need to learn how to survive. You need to find places to find fuel for your fledgling vehicle and where to find water. Now, this isn't a survival game. Water is only needed to replenish your health, not simply to exist. Don't get me wrong, you'll need to find the water, but if you're just out and about in the world, you won't just die of thirst on a timer. The initial story will take you through your first vehicle combat experience and hand-to-hand -hand combat scenario and eventually introduce you to your first stronghold where you could begin to curry favour and build up your vehicle's capabilities and the stronghold's resources. In the early game you'll find that just having enough water and petrol to survive and keep moving can be pretty challenging, but as you begin to progress and build up a stronghold or two, this part of the game becomes much easier. There are a few areas I feel the game really shines. First let's take a look at the combat. The driving aspect of the game is awesome, the cars feel fast, the timing on the acceleration and the turning circles feel just right, to me at least. Vehicle combat is incredibly satisfying, using nitros to boost at the last moment and do massive damage to your opponents, smashing through their remains to continue the chase of another car, being blindsided and knocked off the road. The sound and graphics for this part of the game are a great fit. The combat feels impactful, the crunch as the cars come together and the sudden explosion as your opponent goes down in a ball of flames. On the topic of driving, there are a lot of customization options for your car. You can pick from a whole host of different frames as you progress and eventually build toward having 16 archangels available to you. Archangels are basically the blueprints for complete car designs but you're free to build your own combination as you go along from all the different options. If you wreck your car in combat, or like me, you frequently crash at high speed into cliffs, then as soon as you exit the car, your slightly cracked but weirdly lovable hunchback companion immediately gets to work fixing the car up again. This is great because as you pull over to investigate a scrapyard or raid a camp, your buddy will make sure the car is ready to go as soon as you're done. Some of the customization options outside of the base frame include various bumpers, hood ornaments, spikes to repel borders, and yes that happens a lot, people jumping onto your car mid-fight to smack you in the face while you're driving. Body bars, exhaust, suspension, tyres and more. Car lovers will love this game. Now for me, the real pull of the game was actually the hand-to-hand -hand combat. You do have the option to load out your shotgun to hold more ammo. I'll come to character development shortly, but the fact is, 
ammo out there in the wastes is pretty hard to come by, at least to begin with, so you'll find yourself fighting hand to hand more often than not. This is another part of the game that I really loved. The melee combat feels brutal, there are no floaty hits, every punch, headbutt, elbow, knee and kick feels like you hit like a truck. The combat is simple enough, one button for attack combinations, either tapped for light attacks or held for heavy attacks, one button to roll and another button to parry incoming attacks. But the game makes up for the simplicity with the sheer satisfaction of getting your timing just right while surrounded. The opportunity to block every incoming hit and counter accordingly, rolling to avoid the lunatic charging at you with a knife, knocking his friend's block off and turning to disarm him. It's incredibly satisfying and very visceral. If you get your combo counter up high enough then you enter fury mode which means you can hit harder and pull off your finishing combo chain attacks that much more quickly. As you begin to progress through the game you'll find yourself wanting to reduce the threat level in each of the different territories. To do this you need to take out the totems which have been erected, bring down the local snipers, smash convoys and take out the established camps. As you lower the threat level of various areas you'll level up and begin to unlock more and more of the game's customization options. You can find balloons to go up in the sky with, just long enough to identify everything in the immediate area for you to do. This reminds me a little bit of Assassin's Creed, climbing up to the top of a tower to identify the challenges nearby. Once you've unlocked each of the balloons, you can fast travel to them and to your strongholds if you want, rather than having to drive everywhere manually. When you identify enemy camps, each of them are different and require their own approach to overcome. Elements of this part strangely remind me of Skyrim a little bit. There are caves and caverns beneath many of the camps that you'll need to investigate. You'll find scrap and items to use at your strongholds, take out priority targets and eventually when you're done you'll make that camp your own. Some camps are obviously easier to take down than others but all of them will have some sort of perimeter defences such as snipers or Molotov cocktail launchers, they need to be taken down. They will also each have at least one war crier. A war crier is basically a guy in the camp who riles up the entire bunch. If he decides to start screaming, then the entire camp gets a buff and it makes it really tough to take everyone out. The initial story will take you through all of these mechanics, but then you will be largely left in charge of your own fate and you can choose how much of this you want to do. Building up your strongholds will be beneficial, but you don't need to unlock every single thing if you only want to pursue the story. In terms of character progression, there are two types of personal progression to make use of. The first is that you can use the scrap you've accumulated to build up Max and fit him out with tougher armour, better damage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, higher capacity to hold knives and ammunition for your shotgun. You also have the choice to change how Max looks as you level up. Initially the upgrades seem a little slow, especially as you're also using the scrap you collect to buy upgrades for your car, and you're fighting for every piece of scrap and picking it all up yourself, but as you progress you'll be given scrap as a tribute for every camp you've turned to your side and you'll have the option to unlock wrecking crews to pick up scrap for you from cars you've destroyed in battle. This all saves you time and means you can focus more on the action and less on the survival as you progress through the game. The second type of progression is through a mysterious stranger you meet early on. You can offer him tokens which you earn as you level up. In return for these tokens you can add points into things like bonus water collection, bonus scrap for every pickup, bonus health every time you need to heal up. All of this gradually makes your life easier and means that the elements of the game which initially were interesting but would soon become a chore to keep up with, those things begin to take care of themselves more and more as you progress more into the action. Progression overall feels pretty smooth and there's always something else to unlock, be it an upgrade for your fighting capability or a new look for your car. Outside of the main areas of the game there are additional things to do too which will unlock more cars to drive or other types of customization. You can also steal cars from enemies, if you manage to get them back to your base then you unlock those cars permanently. You can do death runs which are like a race but with some carnage thrown in along the way. You'll also be faced with storms which happen randomly, ideally you don't want to be caught out in one of those. You can survive them if you just keep driving and follow your map. The storms do feel epic though, visibility down to almost zero and very atmospheric. One thing you can't do when a storm is active is fast travel, you'll need to find cover or just ride it out. One of the funniest moments for me was having shot the tyre out of an enemy car, beating its owner to death and trying to drive it back to my stronghold to claim it as my own, while missing one wheel and constantly spinning off the road, and then getting hit by a storm halfway there, 
it was ridiculous, but really fun to survive. There were a couple of bugs I encountered during my playtime, nothing too dramatic but worth a mention. I had some pretty crazy ragdoll mechanics after I was hit by a piece of debris out in one of the storms. It didn't ruin anything for me but it did make me laugh. During one of my fights some of the enemies disappeared and the music just stopped which was a bit weird. The bugs were few and far between, they didn't happen often and again it didn't ruin my enjoyment of the game but it seems a shame that these bugs still exist 5 years after release. Bugs aside the game is pretty solid. Graphically it holds up well considering we're 5 years on and the audio is really atmospheric. All the story quests are pretty well voice acted too. If you're looking for something new to play and like me you managed to miss this completely on release then maybe you should consider Mad Max. It's super cheap to pick up now whether you pick it up second hand or download it. Personally I've loved playing this game, even for the combat alone I loved it. It's just a shame they never revisited the game to offer a decent multiplayer option. I feel like that could have been a huge win for a game like this. I hope you found this useful, leave me a like and comment if you don't mind, sub if you do and I'll wrap it up there. Thank you for watching, take care, stay safe, bye bye now.